I was born in Paris, in France. I'm actually half French, French okay. dad, English mum. I did have some piano lessons. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as uh, modern music, as rock music, that was very much, um, I was in school and I started to play and discover bands and pretty much just turned professional at 17. Just that's what I had to do. I was very clear that I needed to do that. Really? That's so, quite a, uh, you came to that decision that yeah, young in life? But it, it was in the day when you could do it. I mean, we right. kind of, you know, lived in Portsmouth in the south of England. Right. And we, over a weekend, we'd go out and see traffic, free, cream, mm -hmm. you know, Coliseum. Right. That's, that was the, the climate, you know, you could rent very cheap. Oh. You do a few gigs, you start playing, you, it was possible. So that was, that was the climate back then. How did you first gravitate to playing an instrument? Well, the bass is, I always used to um, hear, I remember hearing early Beatles things, things like Rain, you know, where the, beat, where the bass is quite well, loud, yeah, you know, they, they, they yeah. recorded, had special mm -hmm. recording technique. And then I discovered Motown and <laughs> <laughs> that was what I heard, you know, Jameson was the thing for me. Who was some of your other early bass role models? Um, Ch Chuck Rainey, right. so it would have been all of the kind of, you know, a lot American. Or the Atlantic Records. Yeah, stacks, exactly. Like all of that. Yeah. And here, all the English side, there would have been Jack Bruce, mm -hmm. Chris Squire, uh, Paul McCartney, mm -hmm. very melodic player. Um, so there was a lot, you know, there was a lot of influences. Tell me about your first band and your first gig. Um, Early bands, we just kind of, we had, I was in a band in Portsmouth called Mushroom, and we basically were supporting and then going around the country because you could. Right. Um, and every, you know, over time we started coming up to London mm -hmm. and mixing with other bands, and then I got asked to do a couple of sessions. It was very, in the very early days of Island Records. Okay. Right? Yeah, Basing Chris Street. Blackwell, yeah. yeah. Um, and I did, um, Jess Roden was like the first, that was, he was like an early Robert Palmer figure, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, played a couple of tracks on that. There was a lot of other session players and the, uh, the manager from Free was there. Okay. And so from there I got more work at Island and sort of started hanging out in London and then joined other bands and basically got into that session scene. Can you tell me about the whole session scene now? Were you, you formally took, did you have to read a lot of charts or did you go by feel? Not back in the day, it was yeah. very much like they'd play you. You know, you'd had quite a bit of time, you know, you'd come in, there'd be players everywhere, just okay. kind of go, okay, it's what the, you know, chords are the verse and the chorus, you kind of, yeah, okay, you know. Um, and you had time to get it together. Over okay. time, uh, the reading, you did have to get your chops together. So right. over time, as more sessions came in, I started doing, you know, with everything, with the small orchestras and, you know, radio idents sure, yeah. and all of that. And then you did have to read. Okay. So you, you, and you had to get it together quickly. Did you ever study formally with anyone in London once you came? You um, I think I probably had a couple of lessons and okay. just, just really read a lot, okay. you know, in, in order just to get enough fluency to do that. Well, I, I mean, I played with a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, some people who were just in bands ended up having a quite a difficult time, right, you know. Okay. Uh, but if you had, the, so the advantage of like having many, many choices, you could do sessions or do a tour right. and move on from that. Only thing is you had to get enough work to, so, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's the disadvantage of that. You've got to kind of really know people. Right. Producers have got to know you. They've got to use you mm -hmm. for probably a feel is mm -hmm. probably what you get hired for. Okay. You know, um, again, lucky, you know, okay. a, a, just a good combination and a lot of things. I'd be working with some people. Uh, I might be doing a session for Mark Knopfler and then some work for Tina would come in and it was a bit, and we played for Benny King and then Willie DeVille album. Yeah, yeah. And that was all just through knowing Mark. And all Mark's, a lot of Mark's films as well. Okay. Um, well, yeah, what I notice about your body of work is it's so diverse because session mm. players tend to be in one sort of specific genre, but you're all over the map. 
<laughs> you've got to, you've got to, go, like one day you might, this is a fretless session or, okay. you know, so you've got to be able to play in tune mm -hmm. on the fretless, <laughs> you understand that. Mm -hmm. Or it might be a slap session. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you would need to be able to switch between flat wounds, mm -hmm. round wounds, have all the bases. That's what session player is. It's yeah. like you really cover those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you think artists you look to you to be a catalyst or is it to, to carry out their artistic vision or is it maybe a balance of the both? Um, if, you, if they want a bass part, you know, they, they could have done something very simple themselves. Right, so they, okay. they want new ideas. Okay. So <laughs> you've got to come up with, you've got to relax and come up with something sort of unusual, mm -hmm. what would be good in this track. So you could be there a day on one track. Right. And you just got to really handle that and settle down into it, and you know, give people what they what they're requiring. What wh when you look back on all those all your sessions, what what are the ones that stand out the most? What are the records you're most proud of? I like. Uh, yeah, I was thinking that this morning. This <laughs> yeah, a tough question. It, it is, but there are things I I like. There was a track. Um, a track I did for Chaz Jankel, which is oh. called Glad to Know You, which is number one in the States. Ooh. So, as you know, he, he was with the Blockheads and right, you know, doing course. a lot. Yeah, he was there MD, yeah. And he had a, um, a solo career. Right, yes, he did. Yeah. And he did a couple of singles. This single was, um, I went down, he had a studio down at Chiswick at the time. Okay. So he knew what he wanted, but he had to get it just right. It was a lot of clipped and short notes, mm -hmm. and he, it wasn't that easy. So, we, <laughs> again, we're doing that and it went great. Mm -hmm. And in the morning they called me and said, we've wiped the engineer, <laughs> <laughs> wiped, <laughs> right? But can you come in and we've really got to match, you know, the second right. verse. <laughs> so, uh, but we did and it was, and it went to number one. So it was really, oh, wow. that was a nice track. And there was, I was in a band called Runner, okay. which- um, Who was in that band? Uh, Steve Gould from Rare Bird. Okay. And what happened to us was we had, um, so it was like a, a new project, uh, four vocalists. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of harmony, like Orleans type of band, if you, mm -hmm. if you, yes, you know. Sure, sure. Um, and we were really kind of being picked up on the radio here. We went flown to the States to, to actually start that. And mm -hmm. then they had the petrol crisis. Do you remember that? Yes, the I gas crisis. <laughs> right. <laughs> And so stores were sending back albums oh. and they're going, no, you can't, you know, and it all got kind of lost in that, which was on foot. But we, it was a really nice album. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, there's a fretless cut on that called Restless Wind, which is still really nice. It's got a string section mm -hmm. in the middle. Uh, so it's just bass lines and counterpoint strings, mm -hmm. which really nice track. So there's tracks like that that I'm quite close to, you know, I like. Um, 